It's your first time in a lab. Seeing all the chemicals, liquids, glass beakers, and sharps, all you're trying to do is not to get hurt or break something expensive. You're somehow supposed to follow a huge list of complicated instructions using equipment you've never seen before to do an experiment you've never heard of before. Everyone says lab skills are essential for finding jobs, but is it this hard for everyone? Feeling like you don't know where to start is very common and you need a plan and systematic strategy for learning, especially when it comes to complex professional skill sets like lab techniques. Today, let's assume we're all novices starting from the beginning and talk about how to get the most out of lab classes using the mimic or copycat method. Hi everyone, I'm Jack Wayne, a microbiologist, science educator, and the 2020 Australian University Teacher of the Year. On this channel, we talk about science education and how it can help develop transferable skills to move your career forward in any field. Odds are you found this channel through one of our many lab skills videos, and hopefully they've been informative and well-produced. But it can be unclear how you should learn any of this without having access to a real lab. Because my job as a science teacher, I can access these labs to do some filming, but lab space and the chance to use expensive equipment is very rare, even for professional scientists. None of the lab equipment or facilities I showcase on this channel are mine. In fact, no scientist that I know personally owns any of the equipment that they use. It's all paid for and insured by big institutions like universities and hospitals. Every time we do a single experiment and use chemicals, reagents, equipments, or cells, someone has to pay for it. So it's actually quite rare and expensive for anyone to have access to these tools. And if we can learn more about these lab techniques before we even start the experiment, that is good for everyone, whether you be a very experienced scientist or a student stepping into the lab for the very first time. When you're a complete beginner, observing someone who knows what they're doing is a great way to learn. It goes by lots of different names, apprenticeship model, job shadowing, or as we call it, the mimic or copycat method. And there is elegance in its simplicity. Observe, copy, and repeat. If you do this enough times, something is bound to sink in, and it's very common in fields that rely on repeatable skills with an element of improvisation. Athletes, musicians, creative industries, all use this process as part of their training. If you're a new photographer, go out there and shadow a professional to an event or a nature scene and see how they compose their shots. If you're new to making videos, visit a studio or film set and then try to mimic their camera position, audio settings, or lighting for yourself. It's no different for lab skills, but it may not be obvious who you should be copying because labs and scientific equipment are difficult to access. We can start with finding a lab protocol and reading the instructions step by step. Underline any words or phrases that don't make sense and do some background research. Sure, there may be 10 steps in the protocol, but what does each step do? What are the chemicals you're adding and what happens if you skip any one step? This initial preparation is very important and unfortunately, most students don't do this. The more prepared you are going in, the more you'll get out. Out of it. Watching lab videos is also a great way to prepare, but what should you be looking out for? For a start, knowing the names of basic equipment, even something as simple as tubes, plates, pipettes, or bacteria, and what they look like can fill in some of the gaps. The order of steps is also really important. Missing or rushing a lab step is really common, so if you can watch every single lab step and connect it to earlier and later stages of the experiment, that will help you understand how everything fits into the whole sequence. Visualizing common mistakes, sometimes in slow motion, will also help a lot. Pausing and rewatching the technique being performed again and again is probably the most valuable part of these videos that we make. And when you get to try the technique, you should have the image of this in your head as you're doing it. This visualization is just as important for your cognitive processing and learning as the muscle memory developed by repeating the skill. The two go hand in hand. We try to show the same lab technique from different angles on this channel, so you can also get a better spatial awareness of the reagents and equipment used in every experiment. Once you're in the lab, seeing something happen with your own eyes is of course different than just reading or watching it. Most lab classes are set up where a demonstrator is right in front of you, showing you how to do the technique first before letting you try it out for yourself. If you already know what each reagent or piece of equipment is called and what they look like, and also explain how every step of the protocol is connected to the next and what that step is designed to do. And on top of that, you've pre-visualized the mistakes that you shouldn't be making by watching these videos. You will have an incredible advantage and head start in your laboratory learning. That's exactly why I spend so much time making lab videos for this channel. I want as many people as possible to get a head start in their scientific training. Observing, 
copying and repeating will get you started, but there is a limit and ceiling to this approach. Most of the time you're testing lab skills under ideal conditions, but biological experiments are full of variability. Well, you know how to troubleshoot an experiment when something goes wrong, and which steps in the protocol do you need to fine tune or tweak? This is the Bilab Collective. I'm Jack Wayne, and we'll talk more about troubleshooting in the next video.